Okay, this little ornament, I'm gonna do a tutorial. So let's get started. I wanna show you, tell you what you need. The first thing you're gonna do is um, you're gonna need the pattern. Which this is a free pattern from Renee Mullins, and her website is www.chromepurdydesign. No, it's not chromepurdy.com. I'll put that in the description box. Um, and you're going to print out this Inner Wonderland pattern. It's a free pattern. So once you have that, it tells you all the supplies you'll need. You're going to need some tape and um, it's, it's a lot and you know at least 20 colors on here. You can make do with what you have, something close to that color and you can see the picture. There's blue, red, gold, white, and like a cream color, you know? Um, so just use what you have. Um, a dark green or a, you know what I mean? Like don't think you need to get these exact colors. Um, I also have a conversion book, and I'll show you that while we're at it. This is old. This one's from, I think it's the seventh edition. I don't know if there's a date on here, but it is old. And it's an acrylic conversion book. I think this one has been out for a long time. Anywho, it will help you with when you have, when someone else is painting with a certain brand of paint, you can convert that to the color that it is in the brand that you have. So she's painting with Becca Ward Americana paint and I had some of the colors in that brand, but I had some in um, glam tape. So I just converted like desert sand is sandstone and Americana is desert sand and it's sandstone and turks sandstone. Anyway, um, you're gonna need some tape. So just look, like I said, look at the picture, get a couple greens, a blue or red, a, an orange for Renee's, you know, just so you can play and paint along with it. So that's the first thing you're gonna do, need. The next thing you're gonna need to get is some tracing paper. And this is just a piece of tracing paper, um, but I cut from another piece of tracing paper because this is a small pattern. And you're gonna trace the design and we're painting a snowman. So you put your tracing paper on and you literally just trace around it. And I probably tend to put all the details. I didn't do, obviously can see here, I mean, it's my engineering. I do it so you can see. Um, I did not trace the crib because I just freehanded that. Like, it's a brush technique. You don't need to trace every little detail on here. It's just a guideline, and then you don't have to do any eraser. And I use this old eraser. I think this is called an art gum eraser. I'm not sure. I have every eraser there is. I have a whole bag of every eraser, but you can erase the graphite. So this is graphite. Graphite is um, what we're gonna trace the pattern onto our piece with. And I have two colors, um, the light and the dark. So it's the light shows from the bottom and the dark from the top. I'm gonna be painting. The next thing I'm gonna do with you guys, I found this in the basement, this pot, and it was already basted. I just sanded it real good. I'm gonna paint this next. I'm gonna do the snowman plate, but it's an eight inch plate. I have this, it's eight inches, it's perfect. So you can get this in the wood department and I'll put a hanger on it and you could do, you know, I mean, it could be a trivet if you put something, some kind of sandstone type varnish or something. Um, but anyway, I'm looking forward to that because it'll be bigger and it'll be easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. And there are um, different techniques on here, like these knots to hold. Um, it, but like I said, I wouldn't trace all the scenery on here. You don't need to. I mean, you, I'll show you what the pattern has up. The pattern has this wavy line here in the back. So that is a great thing to trace. She's perfect for that. Um, so you would trace this wavy line and have that be your guideline to these twigs. So then you could kind of pull to, I'll show you how to do it, but um, basically the tracing is, um, the line work is your guideline to um, what you're gonna be painting, but as best you can, try and do it you know, without every little detail. Um, I always trace it onto my tracing paper, all the details, 
but I don't always taste all the stuff that you are allowed because I don't. <laughs> I don't have all the details on here. I don't have the buttons. I don't have his eyes. You know, I mean, anything. So, so that's the first step. You want to place us on a tracing paper, and then we're going to take our teeth and you want to base coat. So let's go to the directions and I'll just walk you right through what um, we have to do. So here's your supplies. Then you, and we have some brushes, so let's go over that. I actually, Renee thinks differently than I do, and she does things differently than I do. So I'm not going to be doing word for word what she has on here, um, but what she has on here is awesome. So here's what I have in here. She has a liner, a number 20 flat dot, and I do happen to have that, which is, oh, a 10 flat dot. So I have that, but that's just with liner. That's going to give us like nice detail. A two and four round. I don't know what number this one is, but I'm assuming it's around a two. And then I have, oh, I do have a two. And I have a four. So I have a two, four, and then this is just my little detailing that I love. And then an angle brush, a three, three inch angle. I have that. And a quarter inch she has too, but I'll do everything with this. A half inch flat. And I don't have that, but you, you would want a flat brush. I do have it. Um, a half inch flat is, well, this is actually a number 14, but it's around a half inch flat. And foam brushes, because she probably base coats with a foam brush. And she doesn't have it, but this zipper, um, that's what I do the, the detailing with on this logo. Um, and she, yeah, she has a needle eraser. She uses that for, um, she has a black micron pen that she uses for detailing. I didn't do any um, line work detailing. Her pattern or her picture will show around the star and around everything. It looks like she might have done some black line. I just didn't do that on mine. I didn't put the bow. Um, you know, I just, it's my piece. So I changed it up and made it my piece. Um, so what else we got? Um, all right, so then here's your paint. And I told you about that. If you don't have a lot of paint, if you're not a painter and you want to try this, this is quite a cut. You know, I mean, go see what you can find or get a red, a blue, a white. You know, you'll be able to do some of the touches. Um, then let's see. To prep your piece. I'm going to go over this whole thing. I want you to, you to know exactly what I would do. Um, <coughs> stand your surface in whole smoothness, a medium, and then a fine grit sandpaper. I actually am going to talk about the wood first because we're painting on paper mache, and it's a totally different thing. Um, but with wood, you it's a porous surface, so you need to seal the surface. And to do that, you can use an all-purpose sealer, and I'm going to go get it. Well, you know what? I'm going to go away and come back, and I'll have that on my bed. Um, a lot of you guys who have watched my channel before probably have gesso, which is usually to prepare a canvas for your paper. I never use gesso. I mean, unless you have a lot of um, – sometimes pine or different woods will have knots in it, and there's sap in there. And if you paint on a piece that has a knot – the sap will come through. I've had pieces that I've had for years, for 10 years, and then you'll start to see it, it has kind of seeped through the wood because wood is a natural surface. So you want to prepare it as best you can. Um, all right, I'll be right back. Okay, so for what I do out of laziness, prepping has always been, that's like boring to me. I hate sanding. I hate, you know, oh, prepping the piece is not fun for me. I want to paint. I want to do the details. So I probably skip steps or whatever. Renee has you doing, she, she has you sanding, removing the dust of the tack cloth. I use a wet wipe or a paper towel. Seal your wood with a wood sealer and let completely dry. So she, what kind of sealer did she have on here? She has a Gesso Art Matte Spray Sealer. Okay, that sounds pretty easy, actually. I've never tried that one. But it seems like you can just spray the piece and let it dry, and your wood is sealed. So that might be a good way to go. What I've always done to skip a step <laughs> is basically 
Richard Beck Wheeler, all-purpose dealer for surface preparation. It's a product by Josonius. And that's because, I mean, look at the bottle. It's huge, and I still have it on sale for just a little bit less. But what, what, we, would, what we would do is um, it says apply full strength to clean dry sanded wood or dilute one-to-one -one with clear glaze or flow medium. I, first, let's see, for one-step base coat, mix and apply paint with all-purpose dealer one-to-one, -one, sand when dry, and apply a second coat. That's what I did. Okay. So basically, you take your palette here. And you put whatever color, this is going to be blue, this plate, so I'm going to redo it. I don't have to seal it again because I'm pretty sure I sealed it already. I'm just going to paint blue over this. But I would do a little puddle of sealer, of the all-purpose sealer, and a little puddle of the base color, which is going to be a blue, and mix that and then base coat my wood. Let it dry. Give it a sand. Sand it because it, it brings out like a, the bumpies in the, in the wood when it, um, when you put, put something on it. Give it a fine sanding and then do one more thin coat with just straight paint. So just the color, let that dry and then your surface is ready. Before I had this, the, um, the all-purpose sealer, and they may sell it at Michael's now, I don't know. This I had to get at a paint store, at like a, um, it was a studio, a paint studio. Before that, I just would mix matte varnish. Let's see if it says it on here. No, this is just saying that you can use it for um, to finish the piece. But we actually would take, do the same thing with a varnish, a matte varnish, do it one-to-one, -one and it would seal your piece. I don't see why it wouldn't. I don't know what's in here that's different than that, but I've sealed many, many a piece with um, matte varnish, and paint mixed one-to-one, -one, straight zero, and then done the same thing. Given this an all-over coat of paint, just covered it, then give it a little, a light sanding, and then go back in with a, a nice thin coat of just the paint color, and your surface is ready. So <laughs> there are any number of ways that you can do it, but you should seal the piece, and you're going to base coat. Now, the other thing that is, Renee also bases her piece different. I like to put a solid color a color on here before I start. So I have a background color. But she, for this little piece, and I think it's blue in it somewhere. I really think it's right there. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> um, I just got that blocky. Let's see. So she has the, um, after the wood sealer has dried, and again, you need any remaining dust or trash off. Place the design onto your tracing paper, which I talked about. Take that and position it onto your surface. Slip a piece of graphite, graphite paper underneath. I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, making sure to keep your trace drawing position correctly on the surface. Transfer your line onto your surface by going over the trace design with your pencil or stylus, making sure not to press too hard or you will leave indentations in your surface. Pine is a soft wood. So if you take, I, I didn't show you, but I have a stylus here. This is called a stylus. And I will be tracing my pattern with a stylus. You can use a pencil um, as well or any pointed object. You don't have to be pointy. Um, uh, but, yeah, you can punch too, uh, too hard and make indentations in your surface. Um, so, okay. That's how she has you prepping the piece. So, basically, it's naked wood with a tracing on it. I didn't get that. I don't get it. But then she has you painting in this whole sky area. So you would just paint the sky area around your snowman, whatever color the sky is. Then you would paint the snow area. You know, so she has you kind of doing that. I like what I did and what we're going to do, and I've done already on here, is painted my um, ornament the sky color. So it's base coated the sky color. I put paint on the back because it, it has stickers on it and it just really rubs a little. Um, so that's the sky color. Then we're going to trace our pattern on. Uh, I actually have that in. And um, it's just it's just easier for me. I don't know. I think it's, I don't know. To each his own, and that's the thing. That's why taking so many classes for me from so many artists, um, people have been in the business for years, all newbies, who came up with new ways to do things, you know, old oil painters, people who've done 
had the switch it up and go into acrylic, had their technique where it was a lot more um, blendy technique. So anyway, you're going to do, once I give you the information I have, maybe you'll explore other blues as well. But do what works best for you. Do what you're comfortable with. Don't do anything that doesn't make you happy. <laughs> um, because, you know, you want to make the process as smooth and as happy as, as you can. So, all right, let's begin. I'm going to show you how to trace the pattern in here. I have to change my battery on my phone. Let me change my battery. Um, I will probably refer you to this video in the future. When I do another video, I'm going to probably begin after this step. We're going to have you start trace. So in order to do that, and you might want to use a piece of tape. You know what? I'm going to move um, the camera a little bit. I just don't want to get bumped with some stuff. All right. So this is, this is it now. I'm going to try and do this. And it's a small piece, so maybe I will um, zoom in, but I want to get this trace in there. So I'm going to move to moon. So, if, like, for instance, if I were doing this bigger piece, you can tape it down. You can take a piece of scotch tape, and I like to rub it on. I stick it to my leg first to get a little lint on there so it's not real, real sticky. And you can tape it down, take, tape the tracing paper onto your piece so it doesn't move. And you can lift it up and look under there and see what you got traced, okay? But for this one, we're just going to hold it in place. I'm going to line it up where I want it, and I'll hold it in place, and I'll just make sure I, if I need to lift, I'm going to make sure that I'm, I'm holding it, all right? Um, the other thing is, uh, all right, so here's my question. It'll come to me. Um, oh, oh. You want to make sure you're using the right size of paper. Okay, so if I start tracing, rah, 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 and tracing, nothing showed up on the paper because it's upside down. So I start tracing, rah, 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 and I'm tracing. There's a line. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, that's what it is. I don't know how many times, probably more than I would like to admit, I've traced, not, hopefully not the whole design on there, and the graphite paper was upside down. So you really need to check. Sometimes I'll put even put a paint mark, like just put a splop of paint on the top so that you know which side is the right side to start tracing it. So this is the top. Maybe you can see. Okay. Um, so I am going to position him because I'm, it's a heart shape, but I'm doing it on a round. I'm just going to center him kind of like that. And then I'm going to slip my graphite underneath. See that? I'll try and zoom in a little bit. Oh, it's so weird. Okay. So now, um, like I said, I do not put all the detail. This is small, you guys. It might not have been the best for um, teaching purposes, but you're going to want to paint small stuff sometimes. So, um, I am not going to worry about the nose because I will freehand that in, but you might want to, you know, trace your nose. I'm not really worried about, um, let's see, here, let's see what we have. It's not real clear either. This is old graphite, which I kind of like better because, like I said, you're not erasing a lot of lines there because... When you use a brand new graphite, which you guys might have if you're brand new to this, you know, it's got to be brand new sometime, um, you're going to have dark, dark lines. So you probably don't need to push as hard. But there, he's coming. I got a face and a scarf and a vest, part of his vest, and the slime. So I'm going to just push this a little bit. I got this. I'm going to push this one in, even though, I mean, I could tug it a little bit up this side of his body. I'm not going to put the fence, because I will freehand the fence. I'm not going to put his arm. I'm not going to put the star, because we're going to base coat the body first. Then I'll put the star on, um, or I'm going to highlight it anyway. So 
this little part of his back so I don't look like that. I'm not going to put the moon at the moment because uh, I'm going to put the head at this part of the head. Oops. I think I'm good. I think I have everything on there that I need to get me started. I'm not going to put his arms because I'm not sure that's going to tell him much. So, no, I think I'm good. So, I'm going to set my little heart of pause and my tracing. And I keep, usually I'll keep the line drawing handy as a reference. That's what, oops, see now I'm zoomed down and you can't see. I, we also used to keep the picture, definitely keep the picture handy and keep the line drawing as well because then you can have it as a reference. Um, all right, so next we're going to start painting this little guy. Um, <coughs> see if I... I leave it right here. I think I have to. You're not going to be able to see what I'm doing with the palette, though. So I think I definitely, I want to, um, I need to zoom out a little bit. I'm still going to, I think the next tutorial when I do the, um, the splash, it's going to be better because uh, it'll be bigger and I can spread out a little more. But I am going to try and get a little bit more in this spot. So maybe when I do for base coating though, there's not a lot to loading the brush. So I'll just, once I show you once, you'll be off and ready to go. So I use a little um, styrofoam plate for my palette. You can use whatever, a piece of paper. You can use a real palette. I don't know. Um, you need a water sur source. I have this water bucket over here. Um, this artist loft. I like it because it has ridges on the bottom. My water is dirty. I'll clean it when we get to detail. Um, you need a paper towel. I have about three halves kind of scratched and folded over. This is called a wax palette. And it's basically, it's not wax paper because I, I'm sure I've tried wax paper in the past to see if I, you know, get away with it. But it's actually called... Um, a disposable palette. And you get this at Michael's or if you want in the art department. Um, but it's basically like a waxy paper that you can um, lay your brush on. So you got your dowel mat. All right, buddy. Let's start base. Um, all right, so I'm going to get out some what? She's having me uh, do the sky and curved edge base with bezel sand. So that's what I based the whole thing with. So that's the sky. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to erase this line right now because I don't like, because it's not on the heart, it's the angle is weird. So I'm just going to make it match this one actually. And I'm going to, I actually like it just a little, but you can take a pencil even. And just, I like that better on my face a little better, but um, so that's the sky. So the snowman, we're going to do um, the sand. And I substituted crushed sand for the sand because I did not have sand. So I'm looking for that. And crushed sand. Shake up your bottle. Try to get all that stuff that's in there mixed together. And put a little bit on your palette. And I usually just put a little. We don't need like a giant effect. Um. And we're going to paint the whole snowman in right now. Base the snowman and the snow with sand, okay? So I would use, I'm probably going to use this number four round. And I'll tell you why. It's a little circle. What, what's going to be great when I do the other pieces, I'm going to show you how to really do this. But this is so tiny, you have to just work with what you can kind of use in that small circle. So here's how I'm going to load my brush basically. I went into my water, blot on the paper towel, and you come into this puddle and you pull away, you pull into it with your brush. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. Okay. And now I'm loading the brush. There's a little, that's not straight paint. It's paint and water that's on my brush. So I'm going to go into that. And it 
casting a, a lighter version of the sky because these are very crunchy to me. <coughs> I always put my paint down in the middle and work toward the edges. That way I can go over all my um, ridges. When you put your paint down, put my paint down in the middle and work toward the edges. And this brush, um, the brush is a little bit small for this, but I like it because a round brush is good because you can get into those nooks and crannies and you can also flatten it out. And you know what? I don't need to keep doing this. This is all snow. So I can go over the whole entire thing. That wasn't a very good uh, <laughs> demonstration because I, I went right into my uh, big puddle of paint and didn't uh, add to it there right away. But this is all snow, so that's the thing. Um, we, you might want to put those tracing lines back on here then this way. I'll wing it probably or I'll use a pencil and just uh, don't forget. Now his, um, this is a vest over here, the other part of his vest, but this is his little body. Because when I paint, I'm like really focused. I love it. It's like a meditative state when you're laying it out there. And then you can kind of just see. Um, so I'm going to do this. <coughs> then we're going to base coat the car. And that's a blue spark. It's going to base coat the um, vest and the hat. And then I'll come back and I'll start showing you the, um, how to make the, um, the details, how to add the shading and the highlighting and all that stuff, okay? So I'm going to base coat this. You know what? It's going to probably take two coats, two thin coats to cover because you want it to be opaque. Um, you don't want too thick. Some styles of painting you do want too thick, but for this particular style, we don't want too thick. When we go away, I'll come back when it's all baked. Okay, so this is my first coat. Um, you know what's funny? I just used my um, heat gun to kind of speed up the drying a little bit. Um, and I just remember we used to have blow dryers because, like, I had an old blow dryer that I got on the garage sale one time that I carried with me here to, to speed up the <laughs> base coating time. But um, I knew nothing of a heat gun at the time. Um, but, yes, you can do that. Just be careful because you don't want to burn. Um, the surface or anything. So I just wanted to show you the cream coats now. I've got my first coat on there um, and you can still see the tracing lines around the snow and um, around his head mostly. I'm going to take that eraser and I'm going to erase those as best I can. We're going to be shading around the surface too, but I don't need those lines on here anymore. So I'm going to them off. And you can still see um, underneath the paint, like the bottom of the snowman, but I'm about to cover all that up anyway. I just wanted to show you, um, this is such a small detailed piece. I really am using a tiny brush. So I would say this is a number one round possibly. It's a, I call it a detailer because it's, I don't know, it's like short and stumpy and I can get into details with it. Like probably your hat doesn't need another coat. The black covers fine. Um, but like I'm going to go ahead and do the scarf another coat. So I'm going to go to my water lot, pick up some of that. I use burgundy rose and I'm picking some up, loading my brush kind of flattening it out. So see I have, it's kind of like a shimmy and flat. Try to have the light cool or it makes the process so much more difficult. Um, if you have the light cooled, it's going to make you so much happier. Like you're just going to be able to do what you want to do and you're not going to struggle. Um, another great tool to have at the ready is a Q-tip. 
and I have my oh what's the word that's on me and my little Tom and Jerry cut from jelly from years ago and I keep my Q-tips in there and I usually have one ready to go for them because acrylic they dry fast but they don't dry that fast so you can um like if I go out of the lines or I don't like something you can just take your Q-tip and get it off and it's really dry so but see now I flatten this whole thing out and so it's not it can go wide or skinny so I'm going to take it and just get that little place there of that gap and get it in there once you add the details all the all the beads to them all your you know because you if you're a perfectionist this isn't where you want it perfect you can you can cover up a lot of the um imperfections of, of these two with the details with the shading and the highlighting and all that stuff so I mean you basically just want to have um, an opaque coverage so not see-through and even if some parts of it are a little see-through you're still going to cover that with shading and highlighting and details so I think my vest is pretty um, solid I'm going to go ahead and do the scarf and I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush this is the number four round water flat pick up some blue I'm going to show you again I go into the puddle pull it out like this pushing it into the brush so again I have it thin I can do it thin or thick so I can go thick to thin and that's what a brush that's what these round brushes are for because you can push down I can get really wide so you have a lot of usage for this or you can get right up on the tip and really make a thin line okay so depending on how you're holding the brush you want the paint to flow off the brush you need a little bit of water in the paint to help it move okay so you don't just want to go right into that puddle and then to your feet because and if you do you're just it's just going to be blocky so we'll bring in the flat oops got to get that q-tip see i i push my my brush is nice and juicy so i push down a little too hard and it went right onto his face but i just got it right off but like i'm just hitting it kind of maybe make sharpening up my edges a little bit but like this color covered pretty good with one coat so it's pretty opaque I'm, i don't have to be as particular as i was for the first coat you're just kind of making sure um it doesn't have any obvious um clear marks to it you know but that's basically oops sorry basically um solid these two so then i'm going to go over the snowman one more time too so i have water in my brush so i'm loading into the because it gets sticky your paint will get sticky when it's sitting here out in the air so you got to keep pulling a little slicker wetter puddle out of your original puddle and um i slide up over to that edge and then see this brush is kind of small for this area down here but there's um oops there's two i need some more stuff here i usually just put you know a little bit of paint out at a time because it will dry out and you have that bottle so conveniently you don't need to mix it or have a lot there for later so you can keep it in the bottle and when you need it and i'm just keeping this moving keep it moving because um like i said i mean acrylic no they're gonna i'm just gonna clean up that air thin coats base coats is the way I do it I always I like to have two nice clean thin coats of paint rather than um, otherwise it looks blocky oh that wasn't a good q-tip the q-tip had hard paint and it's really messing up um, I don't know anyway and nice thin 
episode, we looked at this beginning to work on finding a new career. Look at that as just there, and then it's curved just a little bit to make it okay. And then let's make that a little bit eight millimeters. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna speed up his drawing, and then we're gonna start doing some technique. Look at our little process here. It's all I'll be right back. 